let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, as we come together to seek his presence and hear his word. And this is In The Moment. I'm your host, Reverend Ricky Allen Jr. Thanking you as always on this lovely day the Lord has made. And wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I pray that the Lord Jesus Christ is leading all the way. And we definitely want to pray for all of those who are still suffering from the uh, the, the fallout from the hurricanes. Um, it's It's been a lot down there. Uh, so if you're listening down there, if you're able to listen, or if you're watching, we, we are praying for you here at In The Moment. And we are praying that you get all the resources that you need to sustain yourselves. I know this is a time that's difficult. I know it's a time that is, you're probably, you got a lot of questions for God and I would encourage you, don't get mad at God, go to prayer. And with that, let's get started. Our morning scripture comes from Hebrews 12, one through four, Hebrews 12, one through four, which reads, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And we want to pray right now, because maybe your eyes are not fixed on Jesus. For whatever reason, you have grown distracted, something has happened, and you need to get right, as they, as they say, you need to get right. So we're praying for you right now, we're praying for your focus, we're praying for your attention to the scriptures, and we pray that you engage the word in an active manner, not a passive manner. So let us pray at this time. Also go to get-prayer.com for prayer requests, prayer needs, all things prayer. Go to get-prayer.com. Heavenly Father, we come before you today with hearts longing to stay focused on you, to be anchored in the truth of your word, and to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus Christ, the one who sustains us. Lord, we, we live in a world filled with distractions where the noise of life often tries to pull our attention away from you. But today we ask for your help in centering our hearts on, on the things that matter most your son and your holy word. God, we confess that we are easily distracted by our own desires, by the business of our schedules and by the challenges we face. Forgive us for the times when we have allowed the concerns of this world to overshadow the peace that comes from abiding in you. Help us be like Mary, who sat at the feet of Jesus, choosing what was better over the many distractions of life. Teach us, Lord, to hunger for your word daily, to let it shape our thoughts, guide our decisions, and direct our paths. Let the scriptures be our source of strength, encouragement, and direction. Remind us that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. As we dive deeper into your truth, may we be transformed by the renewing of our minds so that we can walk in your will with clarity and purpose. We pray that our focus, Jesus, will grow stronger each day. When the storms come, let us not be overwhelmed by the wind and waves, but instead fix our gaze on the one who calms the storm with the word. When we face temptation, help us look to you, Lord, who overcame every trial and endured the cross for the joy set before, for, before him. Keep our hearts steadfast, Lord, in the assurance that we are held in your hands and nothing can separate us from your love. We pray, Father, for a deeper longing to know you and to walk closely with you 
Stir within us a passion for your presence and a love for your word. Protect us from anything that seeks to draw our attention away from you. When we grow weary, remind us that Jesus Christ has gone before us, that he is with us, and that his strength is made perfect in our weakness. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, we're talking about silencing demonic voices. Silencing demonic voices. And we're in Acts 16, 16 through 18. We're talking about demons all month uh, because, you know, this is the month where everybody dresses up as little ghosts and goblins and everything. And this is where we focus most of the time on the things of the night, the, the creatures of the night, as they say. And so we want to focus on actual demonology here, but more to where you understand how to engage uh, the Lord in response to these things you think you may come across. A lot of folks do. A lot of folks don't. A lot of it is just you. We talked about that last week. Go back, check that message out. But we're here in Acts 16, verses 16 through 18, that we, which reads as follows. Once we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us, shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God, who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the Spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the Spirit left her. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless the reading of your already blessed word. Now, Lord, help us understand what's going on here. Help us fully focus on the word and not our feelings on demonic voices and all the stuff and things that come along with that. We we hear in the media, we watch in the media, that we watch fellow believers allegedly go through. Help us stick to your word and how to function in this space. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, amen. We see here Paul is on the road we know that Acts was authored by Dr. Luke. And we're in a situation here where he's telling a story of, of what they came across on the road. They're going to the place of prayer. They're met by a female slave who apparently, in hindsight, they realized she had a spirit that predicted the future. And they engage this girl because she's engaging them. But it's one of those engagements where you learn a lot about how demons come alongside us and we don't even know it. Because we're thinking that they're helpful, they're engaging these people, Not we don't realize until, until, we, until we really focus in on people. These people who have these spirits in them are engaging, they're helpful, and uh, well, what else? You know, they're, they, they look like they're on fire for the Lord, they're helping us in our ministry, only to realize that their, their intention has intention, as I always say. And that's what we see here in this text. So we're going to dive into it, because this is where the demonic voice has to be silenced. Anytime you come across a demonic voice, it must be silenced. And there is reasons for that. You can't negotiate. You can't participate. You can't come alongside. The, the demonic voice has to be hushed up. And that's what we're going to see here. But why? Demonic voices must be silenced because they present a truth that misdirects the truth. They present a truth that misdirects the truth. We see that in verse 16 where, we're, where they're telling the story. Uh, of this young girl who is going with them, uh, apparently. she They knew she had, uh, she was financially good because she was telling the future. And then we see in verse 17 what she's doing. What is she doing? Let's go back to the scriptures. She's saying, these men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. The enemy rarely announces itself outright. Rarely does. Here, Paul and his companions were heading to the place of prayer, doing God's work, when they're confronted by a demon-possessed girl. The devil often operates in the skies, using seemingly harmless or even useful situations to attack God's people. This is not the, the horns and the pitchfork and the red outfit you see on cartoons. 
The, this young woman was seen as valuable for her fortune telling, but behind the gift was a spirit of darkness. Don't be deceived by the appearances. Even when someone looks beneficial, here it is, even when something looks beneficial, we must always have a little thing called spiritual discernment. Spiritual discernment. The, the enemy often wears a mask to gain the foothold into whatever you're doing. Pay attention to the root of the source of your support, whether it's um, with your family, with your marriage, or at the job, or even in a ministry at church you're working with. Check the root. Don't get so excited about the fruit. Check the root. Make sure the root is healthy. Make sure the root is planted in the right soil so that when you engage the fruit, you don't get sick. The girl seemed harmless at first glance, even appearing to be helpful. She was following Paul and his companions proclaiming they were the servants of God. But the truth masked a darker intention. Don't forget, they were there on ministry business. If Paul had allowed her to keep speaking, it would have created a precedent that a lot of folks miss here. It would have gave credit to the girl's gift rather than the Jesus Christ. Look at the scriptures. They were there going to the house of prayer. Wherever the house of prayer was, they were going to. They was en route. She was proclaiming while they were en route who they were. People would have been drawn to her supposed abilities and before long, more attention would have been on her rather than on Jesus Christ. Why? Here is the play. I want you to look at this behavioral theology here that Satan is using in this small time of text. All right. She's behind them proclaiming they are men of God that's telling you how to be saved. And she's giving them all the free advertising they can handle. Now, let's say these people are paying attention. And they go to Paul and company and say, well, are y'all men of God? Are you here proclaiming your Jesus? And Paul says, well, yes, yes, we are. We're going to be at the house of prayer. You, you can come on over. They would have ignored all of that and went right back to that girl seeking her business. He would have used Paul to get business on the girl financially, more influence, and he would have used them to do that because there was nothing here that the demon was saying that was false. They were men of God. They were proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ, that they were doing all those things. But because it came from her, that would have gave her free advertisement and more influence, more influence. So here's that, that's the misdirection here. See, you got to pay attention. If you, you see Paul is getting free advertisement for the ministry. He, from someone apparently knowing the area. Okay, so he's getting free advertisement. Okay, before then what happens is for a brief moment, you would think, okay, this works. We've got somebody helping us out. She's, we got somebody helping us proclaim. We're en route to do more ministry. This all works. No, it does not because it does not last. What happens is when they confirm, stay with me, I'm going to say it again. When they confirm to Paul that they are who they are, that's going to confirm the girl's abilities and business is legit. So they're going to leave Paul and company and go back to the girl and pay for her services to tell more future junk. That is what is going on here. That is what is happening. That is why that voice had to be silenced because she presented a truth that misdirects the truth. That's what we see here. All right. Number two, it had to be silenced because this causes, these demonic voices cause relentless disruption. Look at verse 17 again. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. What's striking is the message this woman proclaimed was the truth, yet her timing and manner was meant to disrupt. The devil can twist the truth in many ways to create chaos. Notice her persistence. Everywhere Paul and his companions went, she was there, stirring noise, stirring the confusion. The demonic interference often works through relentless distraction. 
creating an atmosphere of disorder that makes it difficult to focus on God's work. The devil knows that even a grain of distraction can derail an entire mission. Again, the average person will think, this person just trying to help. She's just trying to show love. Can't you see that? But that's because you're not looking with the, with the, with the eyes of the Holy Spirit. You're not paying attention because we live in a very feeling society nowadays, right? Everybody's feeling something. No one is searching for anything. Everybody's feeling everything, though. And if you, if you pause and turn around and say, who are you? Where you come from? How, how, how do you know who we are? We've never introduced ourselves to you. We're not known in this area. When you start asking questions, you begin to realize, okay, there's something going on here. There's something going on here. Her intentions has intentions. She got to be quiet. She's not here for us. She's here for her business. And, 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 and that's what you see here. It, you know, you, you, you take that lesson and you apply that to your life. When you got people coming alongside you, and they're proclaiming with you and they're helping you with your ministry and, and they're, 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 they're all in with you. Make sure you know what their intentions are. Make sure you know who they are. Make sure you understand where the heart is. Are they Christians? Are they followers of Jesus Christ? What, why are they so interested in what you're doing? What, what's going on? Look at, the, look at the big picture of what you're doing. Look at the big picture of your mission for God, your, your ministry with the Lord. Why out of nowhere this person all of a sudden has attached themselves to what you got going on? Before you get excited, before you get excited, be discerning. That's all I'm shouting. That's all I'm saying. Because this is distracting after a while. You you because you eventually you got you're gonna be prompted by the Holy Spirit to figure out who that person is. This is insistent. Even though true, okay, let's not forget, even though true, it was delivered in a way that drew attention from the work of the gospel. Because this is what the enemy does. He disrupts the flow of God's work by taking truth and bending it into a tool for chaos. We must recognize these relentless attacks for what they are. Calculate, calculated disruptions that maim and derail us from our calling. That is what's going on here. She's sitting here. She's, sh she's letting everybody know what's going on and who these people are because her agenda is that will confirm my abilities. This is what the demon's doing inside of her. And I can deter people from Jesus Christ by telling the obvious truth. But, because of who this young girl was and the abilities the demon was giving her, he was using the presentation of being a fortune teller to do all this work. And number three, demonic voices must be silenced because they not only cause a relentless disruption, but they cause a holy disruption. Look at the scriptures. She kept this up for many days. Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the spirit left her. Now, I cannot answer for you why Paul allowed this to occur for so many days. I'm not going to even try to do that, all right? But what I can what I can tell you is that something obviously triggered the Holy Spirit inside of him that said, uh-uh, there's something going on here. This is, this is not even, this doesn't even feel helpful. This is just... This is just annoying. This is just, it's, it's not setting with my soul right. Have you ever been around people doing ministry with you that you can just feel that something's not right here? This, something's not going on correct here. That something's wrong with what's going on. Yeah, they're doing what I would hope anybody would do is announce the, you know, the coming of the gospel and the, and the people who are here to help. But at the same time, something just don't feel right here. And for whatever reason, for Paul, it took a couple of days. That's, it might have been discernment. It might have been him evaluating what's going on with the situation and where this girl come from and is she of God or is she not? Maybe he was testing the spirits. We're not sure. But we do know is it came to a point where enough was enough and this had to end. And somehow he comes to the conclusion that she's got a spirit in her. His frustration wasn't mere human impatience. Let's don't get it twisted here. 
This was a holy disruption stirring within him. For days he allowed the spirit to persist. Again, perhaps out of discernment or waiting for the right moment to act. Remember, the girl's a fortune teller. She's owned by other people. She's making money. But there comes time that even when the most discerning must stop tolerating the enemy's interference. I'm going to say that one more time. There comes a time where even the most discerning must take a stand and stop tolerating the enemy's interference in the sharing, preaching, and teaching of the gospel. There is a line. I don't care what anybody says. There is a line. The tipping point came when Paul, filled with this righteous anger, turned around and took decisive action in the name of Jesus. Holy disruptions aren't about losing patience, but about standing firm in the authority of Christ when evil has pushed too far. There are moments when the Spirit will lead us to confront darkness with boldness, knowing that our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual forces of evil. We read that in Ephesians 6.12. Paul didn't waste time engaging in dialogue with the demon. Did you notice that? There wasn't no who you are and all this stuff. You know, in our day and time, we'll probably do that. We're trying to, to, to see what's going on here. That Why? Because it's human. That's what we do. Paul didn't do that. He was human too. He just turned, working on the, on, on the spirit of the Lord, and has called it right out. Like I said, you know, when you are dealing with people that, that come alongside you, you got to let the spirit of the Lord give you the right place and the right time to deal with that. Especially when you feel that there's something off. You got to silence it. You got to be good enough to be the bad guy in a situation like this. And Paul, of course, was good enough to be the bad guy. He didn't waste time. He spoke with the authority given to him by Christ and ended the disruption with one command. It's a reminder to us all. We have the same authority in Christ. When the time comes to confront evil, we must do so with the same resolve, empowered by the Holy Spirit, not us. It's not about us. It's not about our feelings. It's about the kingdom of God through Christ Jesus in which we are saved. Not by works, but by his grace, by his love. And I want you to understand something else here. Look at the end of verse 8. Look at this. When you We silence the demons for immediate freedom. The darkness flees. At that moment, the spirit left her. There was no delay, no struggle, no back and forth. The moment Paul invoked the name of Jesus, the demon was silenced and left. Notice that he didn't yell it over and over again. Like you see in some of these YouTube videos out here. They're yelling at this person and they're yelling at this person and they're yelling and they're shouting and they're waving the Bible and they're doing all this stuff and things. And for whatever reason, the demon has agreed to go to church to be removed from this person. None of that makes sense. I'm sorry, I'll tell you straight up. It does not make sense. Have you ever asked yourself for these, these, these services where people come to get demons removed from them? How did the demon agree to this? <laughs> did the demon agree to that? Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Y'all know better than that. I know you do. But we see here that it was one time. That's all. It only took one time. And that spirit was gone. Reminds us of the power in the name of Jesus. Power that does not negotiate with evil but commands it to flee. The authority of Christ is supreme, and when he speaks, the darkness has no choice but to surrender. The gospel is the ultimate source of freedom. Freedom from sin, freedom from the power of darkness, and from the lies that ensnare us. Now, this immediate freedom points directly to the heart of the gospel. Jesus is who, who saves us, who delivers us, from the clutches of sin and demonic oppression. And just as that demon had no choice but to leave when confronted with the authority of Christ, the sin and the darkness in our lives must bow to the same authority. As James 4, 7 reminds us all, submit yourselves then to God, 
resist the devil and he shall flee from you we're no longer captives of sin but to the schemes of the enemy his name brings deliverance and his gospel offers eternal life to all who believe when we silence these demonic voices we're not only disrupting the work of the enemy but we also usher in the power of the gospel which brings the true freedom and victory through Jesus Christ now maybe you're out there and you need this freedom maybe you have found yourselves in a situation where someone has come alongside your ministry and maybe has come to the church and you think they're on fire for the Lord you think they're on fire for Jesus Christ and you're excited about their zeal and their attitude but something's not sitting right with your soul when it comes to them working alongside you in this ministry confront it and be done with it don't debate with it don't debate with this person don't de don't don't go into all this investigative reporting once the discernment through the holy spirit gives you that feeling of this person's not here for you their intentions have intentions and in in our world today we want to be able to confront it appropriately and make sure they know whatever you're thinking whatever you're doing that is not for the kingdom but for your own personal gain you can't do it here you gotta go i can't have you here with me i can't have you with this ministry i cannot have you in this church because you're not here for the church you are here for your brand you are here for your influence on social media now you're not really here to engage jesus christ and sometimes we just got to say it for what it is, people. We spend too much time worrying about hurting people's feelings, and Satan knows that, so he uses that to silence our boldness. Call a spade a spade and be done with it. Don't sit there and you see he is not doing right. You see she is not doing right. And, and the Spirit has already revealed to you this person is mocking the gospel. You see that they're in it for personal financial gain because they've got some great gift they're utilizing that, that they're abusing because the spirit inside of them is not right. They're, they're not of God. They, you know, don't forget the scripture says, test the spirit, see if they're God. That, look, look it up in 1 John. I'm not going to tell you where it's at. You go look it up. The scripture says, test the spirits to see if they're God. So this whole thing about, well, you know, I don't want to judge and I don't, no, 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 no. There is a righteous judgment because if, if your daughter brought in a bum from off the street and said, this is my boyfriend and he, if he don't look right, if he don't smell right, if he ain't talking right, you, sir, you ma'am are going to judge. If your son brought a girl home who was not talking right, who was dressed any old way, she ain't trying to go to church. She don't know no Jesus. You mom you're gonna judge don't sit and act like you're not you will i'm a parent <laughs> it's instinctively in us to pass a righteous judgment on the people that are around our children and when we don't don't be mad when those kids come back looking like the world don't be mad about that because you didn't come alongside them and say hey whatever their intentions are are not the right intentions for you let alone for the kingdom. Now, maybe you're out there and you, you need someone to pray with you one day. I want you to go to our website, get-prayer.com and, and submit your prayer request. Let us, know, let us know what's going on. We'll share it with our community and that way we can come alongside you and pray for you. But this type of demon is very intriguing to me because of what it did. It's not like Satan, we talked about last week, when they were in the wilderness where he went through this whole process. This demon had a, a very interesting technique of using truth to misdirect truth. He was like, yeah, they're, they're people of God. I'll let you know that. But at the same time, y'all are not looking at the source in which it's coming from. This girl's a fortune teller. And I'm going to misdirect everybody from y'all back to her so she can make money and I can keep y'all from truth. That's the premise of Acts 16, 16 through 18. Look at it from a conceptual viewpoint and you'll see this play very, very clearly. And you'll be able to take it and apply it to your own awareness because that's what we want you to do. Apply it to your own awareness. So 
Till next time, may God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And God willing, we'll talk to you next week. You take care.